She's a former NFL cheerleader. She's a sports radio host at the moment, and she's a comedian, Brittany Kaysen. Now, Brittany was scammed, and in a very dangerous way. She thought she was getting hired for a gig doing TV coverage for the Olympics in Sochi. But it turns out her potential employer had other work in mind for her. Brittany was almost recruited in a human trafficking scam. The FBI is investigating, and Brittany joins us this morning with more details and a warning for others who may be contacted in the same manner she was. Welcome to the Bob River Show in Seattle. Brittany Kaysen, hi, how are you? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Tis our pleasure. So uh, tell me a little about what you do. You're, you're on a sports radio in, uh, is that Charlotte, North Carolina? Yes, I'm Charlotte-based. I do comedy, radio, and um, up until about two months ago, TV as well. All right. And now, and you were an NFL cheerleader. Yeah, back in my younger days when I had the body for it. <laughs> so are we talking a year or two ago? Because you still, you seem very young to me. Before you went to hell. <laughs> oh, you're Things fell apart when you were yeah. 27. Is that right? <laughs> I um yeah I cheered in 2006 2007. Oh, kind of ancient in that history. stage when the Panthers, you know, it was like post Super Bowl pre playoffs. So I was there for the um the not so good games. Yeah. So as a gal who's been first off, and you were also in Maxim Magazine, I read. So you, you're you're obviously you're you're a gal. Uh, you're comfortable with being a gal. You're comfortable being sexy and you know being uh, learning those cheerleader moves. And you're comfortable around sports radio hosts, where God knows. Uh, you know, they love women. But but what happened to you was shocking to you. And uh, and it's really kind of evil. And you almost, almost got in a really bad situation. Yeah, I mean, people think of human trafficking and they think that's something that just happens in Liam Neeson movies or in foreign countries. And I shared my story to show women that it can happen to white girls in suburban America. Wow. It can happen to anyone. All right, so what happened? So someone contacted How did they contact you? Um, this guy originally contacted me through my website. All right, so and you have a website for your, you have a media website for you being in the media, and someone contacted you and said, hey, we want to hire you for Sochi Olympics. Right, and they were very realistic about the job that they were recruiting for because, you know, the only thing I know about Winter Olympics is what I saw in Cool Running. So if he was like, yeah, we want you to be a commentator, I would have known right away that it wasn't real. But he was like, I want you to do beat reporting and live and see events for these sponsorship events surrounding the Olympics. And mm-hmm. that made sense. I've been doing and see work for the past you know, seven years and working in radio. That's kind of you know, part of the gig. Right, and emceeing, given that you have some broadcasting experience, you know it's kind of like a Swedish bikini team kind of thing. They're, they're looking for hot girls that they can hire to come and, uh, and, and host things, and you're okay with that, right? Right, and it, and it made sense. And I, It was a four-month vetting process. I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Wow. I had to send in multiple reels. She even made me um, videotape myself and see a live event just to see that our as he put it, to show the network that I could actually do that. Okay, so... So I thought, you know, the fact that I had to jump through so many hoops, I uh, this had to be a real thing. So you're getting ready to go to the Sochi Olympics. Did you tell all your friends? Did you tell your mom and dad, hey, I'm going to go MC at the Olympics? And were you really excited about it? Oh, I was... I thought it was an opportunity of a lifetime. I mean, for Christmas, all my gifts were, you know, jackets and adapters. My family was excited for me. Of course... My mom was worried with everything going on in Sochi, and when I initially felt, you know, my instincts telling me something wasn't right, I thought I was just being paranoid because of all the stuff I was seeing in the news. All right, what was the first, uh, Brittany, what was the first twinge you had? Well, after, you know, going through a four-month setting process, and it was two weeks before we were supposed to go, he said that he needed to expand his host team and asked if I knew any other girls, because a lot of my, my girlfriends, you know, working in radio, you, you kind of have to be a workaholic. So most of my girlfriends are in the industry as well. And he asked if I knew any other girls that would want to go. And I was, I was like, of course, you know, a lot of girls would want to go. And I suggested some names of people who could realistically up and go within, you know, two weeks and have the experience. And he had his, quote, assistant 
send me an application to fill out a work visa for her before even asking for her reel. And I was like, you know, my friend is really talented, but that just was a red flag for me. In other words, it, 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 other- it sounded like he didn't actually have any standard. Just figured it like another another girl. We're, we're trying to round up as many girls as we can is what your antenna said. It pretty much, yeah. Right. And essentially him getting greedy is what raised the red flag. So okay, so now then what did you grateful that he did. Then what did you do? Um, that's when I reached out to the other girl that uh, I knew was slated to go, and she's also a sportscaster in the area, and um, he told me a while ago that she was going to go and told her that I was going to go, so we just kind of reached out to each other, um, and, it, and, you know, the first conversation when we, that we had, it was like, you know, I'm excited, you know, I got new makeup, and we were all excited, and I was like, does something feel weird about this, and she was like, thank God you said that, because I've been, you know, kind of thinking that something was fishy, too, and that's when we launched our own little investigation, which proved my theory that when women are suspicious about men, they are the best detectives. Mm-hmm. Oh. So you, how did you launch your investigation? Did you just, what did you do? Uh, well, we began tracking IP addresses because there was about, you know, five or six different people that he was pretending to be. People, you know, from other, you know, production company and from the network and his assistants and we tracked those IP addresses, and they all came back to the same IP address. And then we also reached out to the production company, whom he said the contract was coming through, and they wrote back and said that they didn't even know this guy at they all. They didn't know this guy. And, and what country were tournament. these IP addresses from? They were all from um, the same guy's computer, from from America. From America? He's not even from Russia? He no, wasn't in from Russia. America. I, mm-hmm. I met him. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. I see. And now... So when did this take that ugly turn of they were recruiting you for human trafficking? What were they going to do to you? See, that's the scary thing is that, I mean, fortunately, I didn't learn that firsthand. Um, but it was one of those, this is this is the, one of the main recruiting things for human trafficking is they lure women with promises of a modeling contract, a broadcast contract. They create scenarios for women to think that it's a legitimate experience and it can start as with young girls you know a guy will approach them and be like do you want to be a model and a lot of times you have a vulnerable young girl that's like yes I'll, I'll jump onto that and that's how they get recruited but with me you know I, I was even asking the question that had some experience and that's why this scenario was created for me so you would have flown to Sochi and we found, yeah, we found out it was a scam three days before we were supposed to get on the plane. Whoa. And you would have been in the clutches of who knows what. Exactly. And, and that's, the, why, and you know, that's why I shared my story, because I couldn't just walk away from it. No, like, that's, a, that's an amazing thing that you're telling people, because people get hit up like this. In our American Idol society and Dancing with the Stars, when people are offered something that sounds great, they think they should go for it. Uh, the FBI is investigating now? Okay. Just out of curiosity, how much does the emceeing in the Olympics pay? Yeah, how much would you what were you promised to make? Uh, well, in my fake contract that he offered, he offered me about sixty five hundred a week. That's and good. That was for you know per diem, per diem travel um, pay, and, and he told me that I would be working you know twelve to fourteen hour days every single day, hmm. and that again sounded realistic. You know, I used to right. work in. NASCAR kind of doing like the Miss Sprint Cup. He, he sold it as like being a Miss Sprint Cup for the Winter Olympics. And I worked in that industry before, and that's how it is. You know, you work nonstop. You're going from event to event. You always have to be on, which, you know, is pretty exhausting. Mm. So I thought the pay was great, but I um, thought it sounded realistic, too, because it was coming from, you know, a very large company. Right. Brittany Kaysen in Charlotte, North Carolina. Brittany, thanks for that warning to everybody. Thank you, and thank you for helping me spread awareness. And, right. You know, I just, um, I just hope that you know now that people are aware, we can help stop this horrible thirty-two billion dollar industry that should be zero dollars. All right. Thank you.